In part two of this lesson, we'll continue answering our last question, which reads, a compound with the percent composition shown below has a molar mass of 60 decimal 10 grams per mole. Find its molecular formula. So we have CHN, and our formula will therefore will look like this at some point. C, H, and N with unknown subscripts. To find the empirical formula using percentages, you have to assume that we have 100 grams. And if we have 100 grams of this unknown compound, we would have 39.97 grams, 13.41 grams, and 46.62 grams. And using this, we can find out the moles. In fact, I can multiply each of these by the reciprocal of each of these molar masses, and I'll end up with the number of moles, which I can then use to model my empirical formula. What do I mean by all that? Well, let's take, for example, carbon. We have 39.97 .97 grams, and we're going to multiply that by its molar mass. And I said something earlier. I said the reciprocal version. Notice that right now this number is 12.01 grams over one mole. Another way to write this is, one mole over 12.01 grams. This is referred to as the reciprocal of a fraction. Notice that it's flipped, that's what it means. The reason why I multiply it this way is because this gram unit will cancel out with this gram unit. And keep in mind that you can flip any rate. This is considered a rate, we have one unit over another. So by multiplying this by this fraction, I end up with the amount of moles, and I'll do that later. Let me just set up my other ones. I have 13.41 grams this time of hydrogen, and I'll multiply that by one mole over 1.008 grams. Once again, the grams unit cancel out, leaving us only with moles. And lastly, I'll take 46.62 grams and multiply that by one mole over 14.00 grams. This cancels out, and now I can use my calculator. I'll start with 39.97, divide that by 12.01, and I end up with 3.32. Now I want to leave it to four significant figures because this number is four significant figures. So I'll write down 3.328. 3.328, and that actually will go over here eventually. Next, I'll divide 13.41 by 1.008, and that gives me approximately 13.30. 13.30. Zero moles, and that will eventually go here. And finally, 46.62 divided by 14, that gives me 3.330. 3.330, and I'll place that right there. So let me write down my formula the way I have it. I have C, 3.328. H of 13.30 and N of 3.330. Of these three numbers, the smallest is this one. So I can divide each of these subscripts by 3.3. I know if I divide this by 3.328, it becomes a one, and I know if I do the same thing here, it becomes a one. What about 13.3? Let's use our calculator, 13.3 divided by approximately 3.3 gives me four, around four. So I have C, H4, N. This is my empirical formula. Now what I have to do is find out the molar mass of this empirical formula. We have one mole here, we have four here, and we have one here. So let's do our calculation again. We have this number, times one, this number times four, and this number times one. We'll multiply these, add them up, that will give us the molar mass of the empirical formula, and then we can divide the actual molar mass with that number. I'll do it all on my calculator. I have 12.01 times one plus 1.008 times four plus 
14.00 times 1. That is the molar mass of the empirical formula. And now I'll take the actual molar mass of 60. And if I divide 60 by this number, 60.10, by what I just found, I'll get approximately 2. This factor 2, I will multiply each of these subscripts. So multiplying this by 2, I get 2. Multiplying this, I get 8. And multiplying this, I get 2. Therefore, my unknown compound has the actual molecular formula of C2H8N2. And there you have it. That is how to calculate molecular formula from an empirical formula in molar mass.